Madame Kack, uh, let's look at the issues, what the election should be about. Uh, you are a founder of LICADO, the Cambodian League for the Promotion and Defense of Human Rights, a big and very respected NGO. And you have offices all over the country, so you are the one who, know, who are very close to the people as anyone could get. What are the main concerns of ordinary Cambodians? Um, now I think that is a problem of land. Um, in Cambodia, like in most of the uh, uh, developing country, um, land is very important for people. In Cambodia, 80% of Cambodians live in the rural area. They are agriculture, they are farmers. So they need land for their living, for their survival. And if uh, the state take their land to give to a private company for a development, economic development, the name uh, sound very good, but didn't give them enough compensation, I think that this is very, uh, very sad for them because they, they have no more hope for their children, for their grandchildren. So uh, now the problem in Cambodia, the most, the worst problem now is the problem of land. And who is behind that? Is it national investors, foreign investors, the government? Who, who is grabbing the, the, the land? Um, the land, most of the land now, if you look at the, um, our map, we can see that more than two million of hectares uh, were given to private company um, as a economic land concession for a long lease, um, more than 90 years. So it's like giving to this private company. And who owned the company? Some Cambodian, some foreigner. It's so opaque, it's not transparent, so it's very difficult for us to know exactly who are behind the company with a good name. Uh, it's difficult for us to get the truth, but we know that this private company uh, are very close to the power. And once a person has been given this um, economic land concession, what happens next? Um, they, um, in general, they violate the land law. The land law adopted in 2001 say clearly that uh, no one can get more than 10,000 hectares only for one company. But we see that some company get more than 10,000 hectares. And they violate also some sub decree saying that, uh, and land law also saying that uh, the government can take the land to give to a private company for economic development, but it should give, it, it means that the government should give a fair compensation to the people. And it's rare that we see fair compensation. We can see that when there is a uh, uh, economic land concession, it's uh, forced eviction, they destroy the house, they destroy their um, cattle, uh, they destroy their plantation, and they force them to go to another place called relocation site, uh, where they cannot find enough compensation. It's, uh, there is no shelter, there is no water, no running water, no uh, electricity, no school for the children, uh, no toilet, uh, no medical care close to that, and no job for them because it's far away from their original place. So all this, you instead of uh, increasing the, um, the um, economic uh, growth, uh, you increase the poverty and you increase the number of the poor. All these people who had their land, they belong to the middle class. But if you take their land, they become the poor people. And this is again the policy of the government. But you said they violate the law. The law. Can Ricardo send a lawyer to them and can they go to some court or is that impossible? Yes, we have some lawyer. 
and then we explain to the other uh, people about their right and we explain the the land law to them so some would like to go to the court to fight against this injustice but some not only the court didn't give them compensation but they end up in prison so it's become very risky for some people to go to the court we had some example of uh, people who uh, uh, had their land uh, grab and instead of getting justice they end up in prison and what other uh, chances do people have to find work can they go to the city and work in some factory um, they come to the city the city now is full of people who come from the countryside especially young women come to get job sometimes the job is in the factory textile factory with a very low salary with a very hard condition of working you see so um, it's very difficult for 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 people now uh, in the countryside if they move to the city uh, there is no chance that they can get a good job it's the reason why we see that hundred thousand of Cambodian now leaving Cambodia to try to get a job in Thailand, in um, South Korea, and women go to Malaysia as a domestic worker. And it's very, very risky for them. Sometimes they go with a, 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 um, a company, legal company, mean that they got permission from the Ministry of Labor. But sometimes it's not a legal company, so it's trafficking. You see, so these two uh, uh, um, activity are linked together. Sometimes you you see uh, the the company uh, show to you uh, the paper with signature from the Ministry of Labor, but it's 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 fake, and they brought people to 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 sell them for prostitution for forced labor. Um, one of the um, econ economic land concessions which has been very controversial is uh, sugar plantations. And there is a big debate now wh whether uh, exporting sugar to Europe, which is now easier than it used to be, is not uh, to the benefit of Cambodia. Uh, what is your opinion on that? Would you like us to buy your sugar or would you rather say, please don't buy? Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, the problem of sugar is one of example. Uh, more than 80,000 of land were uh, grabbing from the people for the plantation of sugar cane to a rich uh, company. And uh, on 2006, they export 50,000 of dollar. 2011, it come more than 13 million and uh, in three provinces, uh, in the province of Korkong, of Kampong Spu, and Odo um, It's uh, with violence, violate the, the land law, violate the right of the people. They force people to leave their land, they destroy their, their, uh, their plantation, their home, uh, their cattle, and sometimes shot on them. Uh, some case, they arrest them. Uh, it's the reason why we uh, would like um, the EU to go and uh, investigate this case because it's again their own regulation. They said EBA, everything but arm. They have their own uh, regulation saying that if there is a, a human right violation, they will suspend that. But until now, we are still waiting for some action from the EU. Despite that, the Parliament of EU made a resolution on the 23 October 2012 uh, talking about this uh, issue, sugar. Uh, but we're still waiting for the uh, implementation of that, um, that uh, provision, that resolution.
Yeah. And now Cambodian make a big uh, program of uh, lobbying. They are called uh, blood sugar. And uh, 200 uh, Cambodian working for two years, and now they file a complaint to the uh, in London to a, a um, British um, company, Tight and Line, saying a uh, civil law, uh, saying that the the land uh, that produced the sugar were taken from them, and then that company. Uh, import uh, the sugar, uh, sell the sugar. So now they want compensation from that company. So we don't know what will be the the, the result of that um, civil uh, civil uh, law civil suit. Yeah. Um, the EU is still the biggest donor uh, when it comes to development aid. What would you expect of the EU to do? Um, we uh, think that. If a donor give a money to a country, to Cambodia, to another country, they can have influence on that country. They can um, implement their own regulation. I look at the uh, regulation of EU, you know, they talk a lot about human rights, about nice things. So it's, uh, it, we like that. And what we wish to see uh, to see EU implement its own regulation. Yeah. Uh, like some donor uh, give to the civil society uh, money, funding, and they put condition with us, you see. We have to respect the condition. It's up to us to accept or not, but as we need the funding from a donor, we accept the, the condition. So why the, the donor didn't put the same condition to the state that they gave the money? I think that there is no difference. Mm. So would you expect civil society in our countries here in Europe to put pressure on our governments uh, to, to uh, make good on their fine words? Mm. Um, because I think that the money that your government or another government uh, give to a, a, a third country, I think this money came from the taxpayer. So the taxpayer have the right to ask something from the government. The government is accountable to the taxpayer. Uh, so it's, uh, for me, it's normal that your, your German people have the right legitimate right to ask the uh, German government that the money that the German government give to a country, a developing country, should be used in a good way. So would you say there is too much goodwill and uh, not enough strictness on our side? I don't say that uh, uh, it's your side, is, um, but we talk about the um, general donor, you know. Normally donor didn't want to hurt the government, they want to have a good relation. I understand that uh, when a, a, a donor is based, especially has embassy, diplomatic representative in a, in a country, they have to make the balance, they have to have a good relation, diplomatic relation, and as they give the uh, funding you know, helping loan or uh, grant to this country. So they have to balance between the uh, diplomatic way and the condition that they want to see their money used in a good way. So this is a very, very difficult task for a diplomat. It's the reason why we call diplomat, <laughs> because they have to be diplomat. They have to to tell that government in a diplomatic way that they want to see their money using to help people, not to help some corrupted group. <laughs> and uh, coming back to the election, the election campaign will start at the end of June. There is only four weeks of campaign. Are any of these issues uh, discussed in the campaign? 
or is it just about staying in power or getting into power? Or do people have a real choice to, to discuss these issues and to, to make informed decisions? This is um, mm -hmm. a very good question that you ask me uh, because uh, numerous Cambodians would like to see issue that political party uh, bring to them, not only uh, criticize another party or uh, saying that uh, we would like to stay in power if you don't, or threat, if you don't vote for us, we are going to do this and that to you. They don't want to hear that. They would like to hear that if one political party is elected, become the leader of the country, what they are going to do to solve the problem of land, problem of trafficking, problem of domestic uh, worker, problem of domestic violence, problem of rape, problem of uh, lack of job, jobless, etc., etc. A lot of issues in Cambodia. They wish to see that. And they don't want to see one political party just uh, said, uh, you know, criticize another political party. No, they don't want to see. They want to see maturity among the political party, that they come with issue. So you know that if you vote for this party, this party will promote that issue. If you vote for the B party, the B party promote that issue. We would like to see that. This is the, the, the will, the wish of Cambodian people.